We often hear the words poor and poverty being used in the media and our classes, right? Well, it's also important for us to better understand these concepts so that we can learn about modern day Hong Kong issues. That's right. You see, poverty is a broad idea that goes beyond just financial needs. In fact, there are four types of poverty, absolute, relative, situational, and generational. Firstly, according to the United Nations, absolute poverty is characterized by severe deprivation of basic human needs, including food, safe drinking water, sanitation facilities, health, shelter, education, and information. Let's think about cage homes in Hong Kong. In 2013, there was an estimated 171,000 individuals residing in cage homes. Cage homes are often cramped, unsanitary, and generally hazardous to residents, which may expose residents to disease and pathogens. These residents are often in absolute poverty due to an exposure to health and safety risks. On the other hand, relative poverty considers deprivation in comparison to other people's standard of living. In 2013, the first Commission on Poverty agreed to have Hong Kong's poverty line based on the concept of relative poverty. The value of the poverty line is the amount that is 50% of the median monthly household income. So, just imagine that all the incomes of Hong Kong households were listed from least to greatest. The income that is right in the middle is the median income. In this case, around $35,000. We would usually just take 50% of that value as the poverty line. But, as you can see, this amount varies depending on how many people there are in a household. People with lower incomes than that value are considered to be in poverty. There are some governmental interventions, for example, the Low Income Working Family Allowance and governmental public housing. Next up, we have situational poverty. In this case, poverty is usually temporary and involves an unfavorable event. For example, an environmental disaster, health issue, or job loss. To illustrate, those who may have suffered severe property loss in the Mongkut Typhoon may have experienced situational poverty. Also, the 2008 financial crisis brought job losses in the Hong Kong manufacturing, construction, and wholesale trade sectors. Those who lost their jobs may have experienced situational poverty as well. Lastly, the fourth type of poverty is generational poverty. Generational poverty occurs when at least two generations of a family have been born into poverty. For example, the 2015 Hong Kong Poverty Situation Report estimated there are about 180,000 children who live in poverty. That's about one in five children who are under the poverty line and who often have less opportunities for growth and development. Working poor families and single parent families are more vulnerable to poverty, so their children are often left in a state of poverty too. Now that we better understand the idea of poverty, let's take a look at the different ways of understanding the seriousness of a poverty situation. There are three perspectives, income, basic needs, and capability. The income perspective is pretty similar to what we discussed for relative poverty. This perspective focuses on people living below the poverty line, which is the 50% mark of median monthly household income before tax and welfare transfers. Again, this amount depends on how many people there are in a household. About one in five Hong Kongers live below the poverty line. Those who are most vulnerable often have lower incomes, such as older persons, single parent families, and ethnic minorities. Next, the basic needs perspective is defined by the World Bank as seeing if people have the minimum resources required for survival and well-being. We look at whether people have enough purchasing power to obtain basic needs. In a 2016 study conducted by the Hong Kong Council of Social Service and Chinese University of Hong Kong, it was shown that 14.5% of Hong Kongers are unable to afford two or more of the 14 basic needs items. This includes three meals a day and being able to buy Chinese medicine. 
Lastly, we now have the capability perspective. This focuses on what people are able to be and do instead of what they have or how they feel. For example, this includes a person's capability to live in good health and have loving relationships with others. In a 2017 study conducted by the Education University of Hong Kong, 1,410 older persons were surveyed about their life satisfaction. They found that the connection between expenditure-based poverty and life satisfaction was the strongest. Other factors included education and marital status, close family members and friends, self-rated health, and functional capacity. And there you have it, a quick but comprehensive look at the different types of poverty and the different ways that we can measure its seriousness. Learning about the concepts of poor and poverty will be valuable in our understanding of modern-day Hong Kong issues. That's all for now. We'll catch you in our next video.